All right, what's up guys? I just wanted to make a quick video. Uh, I had a question on a previous video of mine regarding the state of Wizard 101 today, whether it's worth playing. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably thinking this, so I wanted to make a video on it. Um, I know I'm answering this question kind of late, but I figured I'd give it a shot just in case people are still interested, so... Um, but anyway, some, some background, I've been playing this game since 2009 on all different kinds of characters, so, uh, but primarily for the sake of this video, I'm going to be focusing on P the PvE outlook of the game. Uh, that's basically been my interest since the beginning, so I'd like to just put that out there now. So if you're looking for like more of a PvP side of things, you might want to go to a different video for that. Um, so I also placed timestamps in the video dedicated to being a new versus a returning player. So uh, feel free to skip ahead to that section just because I feel like it would save you some time. So, all right, well, without further ado, let's get into it. Starting with new players, the starting worlds can feel kind of barren. So I would say like, for example, Wizard City, the starting area is it's constantly got a lot of low and high level players but once you progress into low to mid tier worlds the player count is going to dramatically drop and it's not going to provide you with as much interactive gameplay but i would say maybe making uh your way later into the game there's definitely going to be a lot more players especially end game it's just because the game's been out for a long time and that's just kind of how it is uh so the lack of players also tends to affect the pace of the gameplay, making the player progression sluggish. So especially when you're in these early level worlds, it can be very difficult. An example of this could be Celestia, which is like about halfway through the actual game. And they have the enemies that you're fighting have a really high damage output and really high resistance. And so they also implement more challenging mechanics in the game and when there's not as many players, it can kind of defeat the purpose of like an MMORPG in that sense. However, on the other hand, I would say the starting worlds have very important plot points and are enjoyable to feel your character gain power. So what I mean by this is, of course, the spells start weak and they're going to get stronger as you go on. They get a lot more interesting and more complex. Uh, Number two, the dungeons. They're heavily populated areas with challenging bosses and they tend to have pretty good rewards and that can make you really feel like you're getting powerful. Um, I should also mention that the story is completely voice acted, which really adds a fun element to the story. So I really like that. Um, it's definitely worth trying to game just to see if you like the distinct combat system. And by that, of course, I mean the turn-based combat system, which will you know be displayed up on the screen here. Uh, very early areas are free, but it costs money as you progress. So if you don't want to spend the $10 monthly membership fee for like a new player, then I wouldn't worry. I would just wait for a free week because they, they tend to actually have these a few like times a year where there's just a few weeks where it's free. So I would definitely check that out. Uh, also I believe like first time membership is like $5. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. Now, on the other hand, as a returning player, you likely are already going to know what you're getting into. It can be difficult uh, to decide whether to play based on YouTube videos because a lot of these videos cover different elements of the game. Uh, for example, I would say a lot of people cover more at the business end of Wizard 101. It's been out for a long time, so a lot of people shy away from like actually talking about the story and whether it's good or not. Um, but yeah, they, they tend to talk about the uh, crown shop and microtransactions a lot, which actually don't affect the game that much if you play. Um, the whole point is to play. So if you want to skip some of the uh, content in the game, of course, microtransactions are an option, but I wouldn't really suggest that. Um, well, it's important to mention they are a part of the game. They don't really take away from the experience of progressing through the PvE sections without using the crown shop. The only mandatory cost you'll want to take into account to progress is going to be the monthly fee, which is about $10 a month. Um, however, late game, the best items can be more quickly obtained through the crown shop, which I really don't like. It's actually through the uh, packs, and it's basically like a random chance thing that you can buy through the crown shop for 
uh, the in-game currency, which you acquire through real money. So I don't really agree with that. I don't think that's a great idea, but I'm just throwing it out there so you guys know. Uh, it's definitely a huge downside in terms of playability because it definitely defeats the purpose of working hard throughout the game to get the best gear. While I don't know that much about PvP, I know it's currently very unbalanced and not with your time because of this, because of like the fact that you can get a lot of the gear from packs and you can just spend money to get it quicker. Um, so I definitely wouldn't do PvP unless you're willing to spend some money. But uh, if you're cautious to get back into the game due to the player count, uh, like you're worried about the player count, that isn't really an issue because there's no official player counts for the game posted online. However, uh, on the screen, you'll see two charts that are from MMOpopulations.com that estimate there's about an average of 160, 160,000 players active daily. So one of the charts shows you yearly player averages, and then the second chart shows you daily player averages below that. So, um, Finally, I would say by far for progression and endgame, by far one of the most enjoyable parts of this game is going to be the player progression. While I mentioned that it might be a little bit grindy, um, the main story is very long. It's got 160 levels of content. Finishing it is definitely well worth it because it's got a plethora of lore and combat related gameplay included. Uh, once you've completed the game, you can hone your wizard into the most powerful they can be by farming, dungeons, uh, fishing, pet training, and gardening. So those are all options that you can do at endgame that have extra content that will definitely make it worthwhile. So, all right. So in conclusion, if you enjoy the unique combat, so like the turn-based combat, the creative spells, and the grindy player progression, you'll likely really enjoy this game. I've really haven't found another MMORPG with the same style of gameplay ever since I started playing. So like the turn-based stuff seems to be very unique to this game. So if you're interested in that, I would definitely check it out. Um, personally, I have experienced times where I kind of play this game and then I go play another game, but it like that tends to be the case for a lot of MMORPGs. So um, if you're still unsure, I would just honestly give it a shot, check it out, see if you enjoy it. Um, but yeah, if you uh, if you like this video, feel free to comment down below. I reply to all of them. So, but uh, any suggestions on content ideas related to Wizard One Hundred and One are always greatly appreciated. So, uh, thanks for watching. Peace.